MPAC is mostly public affairs center. It's like a service organization where we try to see how we could help majorly create a kind of a peaceful coexistence amongst Muslims and non-Muslims. We're into empowerment. We're into uh, giving out um, solution to both Muslims and non-Muslims. What we do is um, we first of all look for issues that has to do with advocacy for the Muslim Ummah. Um, beyond that, we also participate in looking out for issues that has to do with Islamophobia, particularly in the press. The MPAC is not a regular, everyday brick and mortar organization because we are a project based organization but volunteer driven. So we, it's like providing an oasis for everybody to come and play their part. Whatever area you have competencies and capabilities. So we started out as a media response organization where we author articles and do regenders to any article that is critical of Islam. But not, mind, not unmindful of also being very objective you know, and critical of any act that is wrong that Muslim men are uh, uh, carrying out. Uh, we've been in existence for about 13 years now. We started off as a web-based media monitoring group back in 2011 and since then we've evolved to become uh, a major grassroots Muslim organization in Nigeria. MPAC started, you know, after the September 11 um, issue in the U.S. MPAC's story has been um, a very interesting one. Um, you can pick and you can tell the story from different facets. We were more or less like an online body. We started with a sheet of fields. We had a um, subscriber base of about 15,000 members. And gradually, after about 10 years, we tried to formally come out from there on. People got to know who actually were behind MPAC and what MPAC actually stands for. We are all with living witnesses to the life that Muslims lived after September 11. Whether you are a Muslim in the classroom, whether you are flying. Because there was an onslaught, you know, on Islam and Muslim. Everybody was being brushed as a terrorist. So we felt there was a need to reconstruct the image of Islam and Muslim before the Nigeria public and the entire world. We've had one of the largest media engagements in the country dealing with different topics. Um, we've spoken to the media and the people and the populace, both Muslims and non-Muslim alike, on different areas. You can talk about hijab, from Hajj, from advocacy that has to do with NYC program, from the nurses, okay, from breakout of diseases, Ebola, and so many other areas where we have been actively involved, educating and giving out the right communication that is required of the Muslim. We also spoke, we are also a very strong voice against terrorism in the country. We've spoken seriously about international terrorism. We've also spoken seriously about the terrorism that we've witnessed within the country. We're also a very strong voice in the IDP project. Of course, with collaboration with other Islamic organizations like Nazast, we've collaborated with MSS, we've co collaborated with so many other organizations to ensure that we care for the needy, especially in the IDP camps and in other related camps. So in areas where you found uh, epidemics, IDPs, uh, drowning water, fire, we've been very, very active. Following the success, success is recorded, you know, in our intervention at IDP camps in Bono State, we got approached by a Muslim organization, NASFAT, like the NASFAT Agency for Zakat and Sadaka, specifically Nazas, to jointly um, carry out some intervention. So in the last one year and a half, we have been working together to provide relief materials to IDP camps in the northeast. We have ex I mean, exceeded beyond Bonn. In Bonn, we have worked at IDC camps and also in liberated communities. We've also extended that uh, project to Yobe and Gombe states. So to date, with NASAS, we have had about five phases of intervention. So we can only take it further from here. Flagship project of MPAC is the Sakina. Through that specific project, we've been able to touch hundreds of lives of uh, poor Nigerians, both Muslims and non-Muslim Nigerians. Uh, we've been able to give them love, hope, and shared uh, uh, compassion uh, of our donors 
with numerous individuals. Sakina's free eye care campaign is one of the many laudable projects that uh, MPAC has embarked on in the past seven years. You see somebody who has been a breadwinner of the family that has gone blind because of cataracts. Restoring his eye has given him opportunity to even empower his own family. So it is there and then, you can see it immediately. We were in Ilorin two years ago, and there too we did cataract surgery in collaboration with the ophthalmological unit of the University of Ilorin. And we did surgery and corrective lenses for 97 patients. These individuals are indigents in the community who have no help from um, either the state or personal individuals. So MPAC has taken it upon itself to provide this critical healthcare service to these individuals. We've also been involved in um, very severe medical cases where we've dealt with spine issues. Dr. Salman heads the uh, Project Sakina and he has brought in one of the best spine surgeons in the world. We've been involved with a collaboration with an hospital in India where we've done two more, um, two more surgery, uh, spine surgery, a heart-related surgery for patients and without taking a cover from any of them. We implore other individuals in the society to support this project. Um, it's impacting lives, it's changing their stories and is making our community better. MPAC has touched almost every nooks and crannies of the country. We've gone to the interland, we've gone to the rural areas. We've taken the message of Islam, uh, normative Islam, uh, to the far corners of the country. One of the projects we actually implemented that uh, I, I would like to focus on is the mosque we actually built, a central mosque. We champion the the campaign to actually rebuild a mosque that uh, is so dilapidated that uh, it's actually fit, fit for purpose and it's actually used by about 13 different communities in that particular area it is a central mosque that is used by hundreds of people but it's, it's about 100 years old uh, so basically we went in there we did uh, need assessment for the community and we brought them water because there's actually no uh, portable water for the entire communities in that area. So we, we, we built them a uh, modern mosque and then we also provided them uh, uh, water for wudu as well as for use in the entire community. So that's one of the great achievements that MPAC made in the last one year. Um, be, before that, we've actually gone into other communities as well. Uh, Many, many come to mind, but a specific one that I would also like to, to mention is the one we did in Kogi State for you know, another rural community there a few years ago. It's a straight line. It doesn't appear in the corporate organization. So remember that the skills that take you up there are not necessarily the skills that will sustain you up there. So when you rush and find an answer, you are comforted by the answer and you stop being curious. And chances are you've got the wrong answer or it's a partial answer. I know many doctors now who have to go and take courses in communication, journalism. Because that's the way they build it. Those who achieve extraordinary results, to my mind, are those who put in extraordinary efforts. When you are advancing a disruptive hypothesis, you must be wrong at the start to be right at the end. In that journey, what you know for sure is that you would move. What you don't know for sure is whether you would move this way, or that way, or that way, or this way. You don't even know what way forward is.
the issue of volunteering is one aspect we are still trying to find our feet as Muslims. So inshallah in the next few months, we would transit from being a, an organization that is run almost entirely by volunteers to an organization that will have a mix of full-time, you know, well-paid staff and professionals who hunt for talents and we strategically place them in uh, the uh, in crucial areas that will actually you know, make the organization to work better uh, for the Muslim community. At inception, we had that um, flexibility of having cash and that can meet the project. But as we went along, we discovered that the list of the people that request for assistance in one way or the other keeps swelling. So we have longer lists and meager resources. And today that is the challenge that we are facing. Today the challenge that we are facing is that we have a long queue of people hoping on Allah to help them through the impact project with very meager resources. So today is a major challenge. So we are appealing to people that Allah has blessed with resources to come to the aid of people who do not have via the impact project so that they can get assistance. Alhamdulillah, I've been involved with MPAC for some time now. I think from their very second conference and uh, I was glad to be part of that. I've been part of the conferences and other things that they have done over the years. I was part of their master class, which they did some two years or so ago. I'm aware that uh, they do, they have organized scholarships for brothers to study overseas and I was part of one that was granted a few months ago as well. Alhamdulillah, I think uh, is an organization I am proud to associate with. Hempark uh, Muslim Public Affairs uh, Center is uh, an organization, a Muslim organization and uh, one of the Muslim organizations that uh, uh, is well recognized in the society today because of their impact. As the name goes, MPAC has made uh, several impacts in the society, in the life of, of the people, religiously, socially, economically, and, uh, and so on. So they work to foster unity among the Muslims, to promote empowerment, and uh, also good relations between uh, people in the, in the society, and to create awareness, and they have been a very useful uh, organization among the, amongst the Muslims. I think they have carved a niche for themselves in terms of uh, what they do. The brothers, I think, are very bright and sharp, and uh, Islam can be proud of them. MPAC conference has become something that uh, we look forward to. Uh, the last time I attended the program, I noticed, uh, uh, considering the array of uh, the speakers, who attended the, the program. So I thought it was uh, something that was holistic. They had a kind of holistic approach to how they address the issues in the, in the society. So from religious aspect of it, social aspect of it, economic aspect of, uh, of it. And those who spoke then the last time I attended, they spoke well on all the issues given to, given to them and it was well attended. It was uh, a kind of a social organization that a youth would really like to buy into and they really they will appreciate the program that uh, they have for them, inshallah. I will say to them to keep up the good work that they are doing, to strive to get better. As I said earlier, they have carved a niche for themselves. And uh, the fact that they even charge for their conference and uh, the conferences are as successful as I have seen on three separate occasions shows that uh, People believe that they are delivering uh, quality and people generally do buy into it. I want to urge them to do more of it. As Salah says in Surah Al-Tawbah, there are two places in Surah Al-Tawbah, Allah says, وَقُلِ اِعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ Continuing to do righteous deeds, Allah sees what you are doing. The Prophet will be shown what you are doing. And the Muslims too, they are witnessing what you are doing. So let this be a word of encouragement to you. Allah says, Anyone who does a good deed, so it is, even if it is not more than an atom, that is the smallest uh, thing you can think of, the smallest particle, if you do a good deed, that is the smallest thing, you are going to see the reward. 
The same way, if you do anything that is evil, even though it's very small, you are going to see the, uh, the recompense for, for that. So let us continue on good deeds we have been doing, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with us. We should not be. His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, the Amir al Mu'minin, the President General of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, and the President General of Jama'at al Nasr al Islam, wanted to be here personally. I know that His Eminence blocked this day some two months ago because he intended to be physically present. However, you all know the situation, particularly in the North today, which necessitated his stay back to attend to very, very urgent and serious matters. He therefore asked me to come and represent him and deliver his felicitations to MPAC and to Nigerian Muslims in particular and the Muslims wherever they will be on this side. The seminars specifically instructed me to say that he has been following the activities of MPAC and he has been extremely happy and pleased with the activities, particularly the da'awa and the enlightenment aspect of MCAL activities. His Eminence the Sultan equally asked me to invite the executive members of MPAC to visit him in Sokoto at their convenience, but as soon as possible, for discussions on how best he could assist MPAC to widen its activities. So I'd like to you know, seize this opportunity to thank all our donors over the years for trusting and believing in us and imploring them, begging, pleading with them not to give up hope, to continue to support our works. Um, the impact is felt, believe it or not, people that had no hope before Example, the IDP camps, we have a lot of interventions that we've done in the area of IDPs. We've worked with NASFAT, we've worked with a, a few other organizations. So these people had lost hope completely because they've lost their sustenance, wealth, pro property, and you've come to their aid. So don't stop doing it. Even if we don't thank you fiscally, if this um, displaced people don't come to thank you, Allah keeps thanking you, and that's why you have the resources. So please put your money where your mouth is. Keep supporting the impact. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.